Hi, my name is Leandro Facchinetti, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to truncate silence in Reaper. So here in Reaper, I have a session that is a dialogue, and sometimes people are thinking, they are not speaking. Sometimes it's between someone asking a question and someone else answering it, or maybe even just the person is stopping to think about it. And when you're editing this kind of dialogue, maybe for a podcast or something else, most of the time you will want to get rid of these silences. And it's annoying to go through the whole session and get rid of all of them by hand. It's a huge time saver if you could just do it automatically for the whole session. Well, that's what we are going to do here in Reaper. The first instinct is to just select the tracks and use this tool called Dynamic Split. And then you can get rid of silences. But the problem is it will delete the parts of the audio that are silent, but it's not going to move the parts. Uh, and that's not what you want. Effectively, what you want is to get rid of this chunk of time. So there is a workaround. There is no native function that I could find to do this, but there is a workaround. And it goes like this. First, I am going to create another track and I'm going to group the two tracks that are dialogue under it. And now in this mother track, you can see the waveforms for both parts of the conversation. I'm going to then render this track. And now I have a track that is both people talking. And I'm going to group this track with the two child tracks. Now this way the tracks are linked. If I tried to move one of them, the others would move. And if I go to split this mother track, I can select to split the selected and grouped items together. So it's only taking into account the silence that happens in the mother track, but it will split all the children simultaneously. And here are some settings that I find work well for this kind of work. So the minimum slice of audio that will be recognized as audio and not silence is 100 milliseconds. And I don't want the thing to be unnatural and I don't want to remove all the silence all the time. So I say that if the silence is less than 500 milliseconds, then just leave it as it is. And then there is the threshold and to figure this out, it depends on your audio and what you have to do is just play it and then look at the meters and you will see the range in which the, the content is. So it's around 30 hertz, uh, 30 decibels. It's around this area. So anything below 40, I will consider silence. So coming back here to the dynamic split, I'm gonna say that anything below 40 dB is silence. And this hysteresis is, or hysteresis, I don't know how to say this. I don't know, it has to do with the sensitivity of the gate. I don't fully understand this, so I don't touch it. But the action to perform is important. I need to split the selected and grouped items all at the same time. And I also want to, re to leave some silence in every chunk, both in the beginning and the end. And that is because I don't want to remove all the silence all the time. We do take some natural pauses when we are speaking and we breathe. And if you remove all that, it sounds really unnatural. It sounds like uh, Google Translate reading to you or Siri talking to you, but in a bad way. It sounds robotic. It doesn't sound good. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave some pads in the beginning and end of every chunk. And then when I smush everything together, these pads will turn into moments of silence, but shorter. So I'm triggering this dynamic split for silences that are at least 500 milliseconds, and I'm leaving 300 milliseconds, 150 plus 150. So I'm leaving 300 milliseconds. So I'm going to take pauses that are one second long or five seconds long, and I'm putting them all in, I'm turning them all into silences that last for 300 milliseconds, which is a good pace, I find. But you can tweak these values to your taste. So now I can split, and it split not only this track, but also all the child tracks as well. And with that, we are ready to get rid of this track. We don't need it anymore. The purpose of that track was only to split these tracks. And now I have tracks that align perfectly 
that contain just the material that I want. And now I want to smoosh everything together. So I'm going to select all the clips in both of these tracks. And I'm going to use an action that comes with SWS, the extension for Reaper, that most people who use Reaper use this extension as well. It's called, it's an action called reposition selected items. And then you can put some interval between the chunks. And if you wanted to do that instead of putting the pads, I guess it kind of could work. But the problem is in those intervals, when there is literally no audio, it can be jarring because usually there is some noise in the room and you can hear that in the recording and you may not even realize that it's there. But as soon as you hit one of those chunks of time when there is absolutely no sound, it can get jarring. So I think that putting the pads in the chunks of audio, and I mean pads like this in the beginning and end, this 150 milliseconds, I think the result is more natural. It keeps the listener in the room with the people who are speaking. So I, I could put some interval here instead of before in the dynamic split, but I find that this gives me better audio. So now I can smoosh everything together. And because we split all the tracks exactly the same way, everything remains in sync, but we got rid of the space between. So we got rid of the chunks that were like two or three seconds of silence. For the next part, you may be thinking, well, I could go further and delete all these chunks, right? Yes, you can delete all, the, all these chunks and then you're left with just the audio. And there, you can even use dynamic split to get rid of all, the, all of them automatically. But I find that that's not ideal for the reason I was think uh, I was mentioning before. The silence gets jarring because the noise floor will be going up and down. You will be hearing some slight hiss, and then you won't. It can be weird. So I find that it. And this is an extra tip. I find that it's it makes more sense to use this tool in. And this time it's also an extension of Reaper, but it's not in AWS. It's in this other extension called Repex, and most people who are using Reaper are using Repex, but there is this one script in there, it's called, it's not a script, it's an effects, um, it's called the Auto Mixer. And then you can just throw Auto Mixers, not in the mother track, but in all the child tracks. Let me get rid of this one. So you just throw the auto mixer in all the children and the auto mixer will turn the game up and down according to who is speaking. So when this person is speaking, this person's mic will be low. It will not be down to zero, but it will be low. And the fades between people will be more natural. The auto mixer takes care of this. It's actually modeled after an algorithm that is used in industry all over the place with round tables and reality shows when you just don't know who is going to speak next. People use the auto mixer to fix this and we are using the auto mixer here in post-production as well. And that's it for today. You now know how to get rid of silence and take back your time in the editing sessions. Thanks for watching.